Hey guys, what's up? Nate here from Protoculture. Welcome back to another Sonic Academy tutorial. Uh, we're going to be doing an overview for a full tutorial that I've done for Sonic Academy. Uh, you can check out the full tutorial at the Sonic Academy website. Uh, so I wanted to do something a little bit different to what I've done before. Uh, so not progressive trance or, or house or anything like that, uh, like I have covered in the past. Uh, I wanted to kind of step back to my roots and I was always a massive breakbeat fan when I first got into electronic music. So I uh, had this inspiration to kind of go back to stuff like Crystal Method, uh, Hybrid, uh, Propeller Heads, Prodigy, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I don't know if you remember back in the day, sort of like in the late 90s, every sort of action film that came out had, uh, you know, some sort of new school breaks in the soundtrack. And I really wanted to kind of revisit that and kind of recreate that kind of uh, feeling. I think stuff like the uh, Spawn soundtrack, the original Matrix movie, some of the old Pierce Brosnan and James Bond films, um, they all had these classic sort of breakbeat uh, soundtracks. So I wanted to kind of capture that with sort of some big epic orchestral elements in it and some really nice driving breakbeat stuff with LED synth layers and stuff on top of that as well. Uh, so we're going to check out the track that we've produced. Uh, it's one of the more in-depth uh, tutorials that I've done at Sonic Academy. Uh, probably going to be more sort of aimed at um, advanced users, intermediate users may be able to follow along. Beginners, you'll probably get some good stuff out of this. However, I do kind of assume most of the time that you uh, have sort of a basic understanding of what's going on in Cubase. I don't explain these simple stuff. And I do move quite quickly and make extensive use of third-party plugins in this one as well. Uh, so this video, we're going to take a look at just an overview of the track, what we used to put this together, uh, and I'll just show you around the project files for this full walkthrough. All right, let's take a look at the project files. Uh, so uh, at the top here, at this stage of the project, um, I rendered most of the stuff down to audio, just to make sure that the timing was correct. And a lot of the cut-ups that we did towards the end of the series as well, it just makes it a lot easier. I find when you're working in audio, you can get much tighter results. Did loads of little drum fills and little edits and stuff all over the place. And doing that in audio is just a lot easier. Uh, we've got our group channels over here, which is everything is being bust into at this at this stage. Uh, this is the drum section, so we'll take a look at these first. So the drums were pretty much entirely programmed inside of uh, Machine. Uh, we initially started off with like a little sketch, and they pretty much played live uh, except for one of the back loops here. Uh, everything was programmed by hand inside a Machine, and then exported as audio files into Cubase. Uh, once the sketch was complete. You can take a look at some of the drums here. So that's the basic loop that we had. Uh, this tuned sub is from Kick2 from Sonic Academy. Uh, so we actually set that up uh, to track pitch. Uh, so later on in the track when we have some key changes, you can actually see the kick goes up or down, I should say. So that sub follows the uh, key of the of the track. Uh, and a lot of the breakbeat uh, sort of, a lot of the fills and stuff here were all done by hand. You can see there's a number of little chops and things that we've done here. Uh, could take a look at some of these over here. So there we just applied some reverb directly to some of the snares. And we also had some uh, bounces of this entire section which were affected separately. See so we've done some breakbeat fills using Infiltrator over here. Down here as well, these also done manually, some really fine uh, adjustments made almost down to 128th notes uh, on these snare rolls. Again, all just done by hand. Cool. Uh, a lot of the processing for the drums, uh, they were kind of mixed at various different stages throughout the track. Uh, as far as the mix concerned, uh, we can bring this up. Some of the uh, mix was done internally inside a machine. Uh, so there was kind of minimal work that we had to do on top of this, like our kick, for example. We had uh, Claro, which is kind of my go-to EQ at the moment, um, which made it really easy to kind of just mix the uh, EQs for all of the drum parts. Uh, a little bit of mixer delay just to provide some stereo and some of the uh, ghost uh, snare hits. 
A little bit of clipping coming here from Newfangled Audio Saturate. Transient Master we used on the sort of backbeat, which is this one down here, just to really kind of bring up the sort of room tone or the, the, the uh, sustain elements of the breaks. Just to really fill up the, the loop uh, in the background. So that pretty much covers the drums. Um, we'll come down to some of the other elements in the track. Let's take a look. We've got another sort of percussive area here, which is the more sort of orchestral style percussion. These came from Asteroid from UVI, uh, as well as Damage from Heaviosity. These hand claps have got some really big stereo, makes a delay on it, kind of really push them out to the sides. And that sort of distorted loop coming from Heaviosity's Damage. We'll look at the bass elements here as well. Uh, so there's these three parts, which are kind of just more in the beginning of the track, just for the orchestral section. Uh, this one, I believe, was from Massive X. Just kind of a drone sound that we found. There's a bit of auto panning going on this one. I think at this stage we also bounced this out. This is incorrectly labeled here. This is in fact from Hive 2. Uh, I believe it's the Hive Science Bank that we got that from. And this Falcon. This Falcon base is from Cinematic Shades. Uh, it's from the Falcon Library from UVI. And these pair up with our orchestral parts. So during the full walkthrough, what we did is initially just used the um, Native Instruments Symphonic Essentials, or symph not the Essentials, the Symphonic Library. Um, it started off with just these strings using the string ensemble. And what I do is I initially sort of play out the entire section using the string ensemble and um, get the rough idea for what I'm doing. And I'm playing sort of all the notes from the bass right up to the top and chords and such. Uh, and then once we had the sort of theme, we basically break that down and separate or, um, or separate the MIDI into separate parts. So we had uh, sections for the cello, uh, bass, violins, uh, violas, etc. I'll run you through all the elements here. There's actually some stuff here from Sequest, which is a new library from Native Instruments. It's kind of doing some of the rhythmic stuff in the beginning. And we're just automating the mod wheel up there to kind of increase the layers of uh, textures on top of each other. Then there's another uh, action strings here from also from Native Instruments. It's just an additional sort of rhythmic layer playing here. Right, and then we kick into the sort of more melodic stuff. So we've got our bass or our cello. We've got the violin arp, which is another rhythmic layer. Our violins. So these are all supporting layers. The main melody comes from the violas and this viola short layer. There were a couple of notes that kind of dragged a little bit in the sort of writing of this part. Um, so we had some legato and some notes, some of the notes a little bit quicker. And rather than using key switches, what I did here is to actually record a short layer as well, and then blend between the two. So we have the, uh, the sustained notes playing on the one channel, and then these other ones making up uh, some of the shorter ones. And you can hear, they're very sh soft, just to kind of add a little bit of extra attack to some of the Sustains. Put it all together and you get this.
And then looking at the brass, uh, this is again echoing some of the melodic stuff from the strings. Uh, we've got trombones playing here, which covers the low end. We didn't do tubers, we didn't feel like we needed extra bass elements in here. And then the horns are sort of the primary section as well as the trumpets making the main lead. And then we've got the swells part, which is also just one of the articulations from the symphonic library, uh, just playing the swell towards the end as well as some woodwinds as well. This kind of has a nice little sort of uh, part that kind of steps up through behind this melody as well. And this is just the entire woodwind ensemble. I'll just solo the entire orchestra for you. Uh, we had some percussion in here too. Right, so also uh, sort of backing up a lot of this orchestral stuff in the beginning here, uh, there's a number of sort of Brahms and hits and stuff that we uh, exported from various different places. Rise and Hit, uh, Meteor from UVI, I got a number of these from. There's a couple from uh, Ultimate Effects 3 from Sonic Academy as well, some of the more electronic effects. Uh, we can take a look at some of those. But a lot of these are just sort of accents and sort of points of interest uh, where things switch over for the transitions. And then some tonal ambience as well from Sound Paint. We got a few sort of um, drones and things from one of the libraries. Really dramatic sounds that I wanted to get in here to kind of punctuate this this intro section. Right, so then we kind of get into the more electronic part where I want to kind of have like a section building up to the breakbeat um, where things get sort of frenetic and very full of energy. Uh, so we'll take a look at some of the synth parts that we have in here. So the, the sort of main melody or that outside of the uh, outside of the orchestral section that we had was this little Brahms sample from Meteor, which we put into a sampler. And that plays this melody. And it's kind of backed up by these other Brahms as well. And because it's such a central part of the track, this, I really wanted to kind of accent this as much as possible. So we've done that in two different ways throughout the track. Uh, in this first section, I really wanted to mirror the drums with the actual Brahms sample. So you kind of get these hits on top of those notes. So we've just kind of mirrored the rhythm with the kicks as well as uh, some short crashes and some full crashes from Ultimate Drums 2 from Sonic Academy. And you kind of get this effect. You can kind of, yeah. Uh, Really kind of hits hard there. Uh, so we'll look at some of the synth parts here as well. So kind of backing up this section, kind of running through the whole track, there's this little appreciator from Hive, which was part of the original sketch we did in Machine. Just kind of on the top end, providing some sort of rhythm for these synth parts. We've got Anna on Acid Duties on this section in the build-up, which comes in here. And then we get into sort of the main sort of breakbeat section. So it kicks into the breakbeats, and then we've got the slightly more mellow section building up to 
the part where the Brahms kind of come back in again. We'll look at those components now. I've got this like very growly falcon uh, bass sound that we put in here. These additional little hits that we have down at the bottom also came from Anna too. And some of them are processed with shade. There's a filter on this. Some reverse reverb. Put it panning automated. So we'll kind of sort of like dubstep stabs that we can kind of render down to audio and then add additional effects on top of that. And these nice little chopped up ones were quite nice in this little break here. So this melody was also part of the original sketch. It comes from Massive, uh, this melodic plux element here. And so the way that I came around with this, um, it's one thing that I've been loving about Machine at the moment is using the quantize function, or not quantize, the uh, scale. Uh, and you can kind of add a scale in, uh, but then rather than playing notes on a keyboard, I'm a keyboard player and I am I do this a lot and I tend to fall into the trap of kind of doing the same things over and over again. With this guy, I find when you're in your, uh, your scale that you want to be in, playing the pads for me isn't as, uh, it's not normal for me. So I tend to, to make mistakes and do things that I normally wouldn't do. And I was quite happy with what we came up with this melody for me just in a jamming around with the pads yeah this is what it sounds like and then to add a bit of extra interest to this we've actually played them backwards yeah and then I run them through some effects uh infiltrator uh which is providing sort of like a weird delay kind of effect oh well, yeah if we just listen to this played backwards this volume automation is basically just bringing them in and out. You can kind of hear those reverse notes coming in, and then we'll just add Infiltrator in, which is doing some delay stuff. Moving on, we got this synth that I found in Omnisphere, which really kind of reminded me of some of the old Crystal Method tracks. I don't know, there's something about the quality of this, the tone uh, that I really liked. That's uh, this riff over here. And this is kind of part of this build up that takes us back to the Brahms section again. We'll take a listen to everything together there. Uh, we've got this being filtered up and also brought back the acid again uh, to come in with that uh, Omnisphere synth. So again, we're doing quite a bit of automation and chops it uh, over here. This section here, yeah, I kind of really wanted that acid line to stand out. So we've got it kind of playing it dry like that, and it's fairly monophonic, that sound. What I've done here is I've added in a shaper box to kind of uh, open it up, add a harsh effect to it, which is modulating. Uh, that's on top of this filtering up, and this section here is just uh, mixing in some heavy distortion on top of that. So you kind of got this nice little section where it really stands out in that little break. Right, so now we get to the reintroduction of that Brahms section. This part I really had a lot of fun doing. Um, so we found this other lead from Anna, which is the sound. Uh, it's a lead sound that's a reversed note there, but uh, we've basically redone the same notes as the Brahms little brass stab thing that we had going on there. Uh, and then chopped up a whole bunch of stuff and then also run uh, stutter edit on top of that so you can see this is the original bounce from the Anna 2 
So we're just doing some chops there and really kind of mirroring that Brahms section. Uh, so the second channel over here is basically a bunch of cuts that we took out from stutter edits and then kind of mix the two together with the original take. Uh, there's a couple of these effects like this. So we can put them all together and you end up with this for this brass section, for this brass section here. And we're really nicely just to kind of lift up that that part. So we had the same melody, but just more angry, more energy in that section, uh, which then takes us back to the uh, orchestral part. So the orchestral part, we didn't just copy from the beginning. We've kind of done a variation of the same theme, um, but there's kind of a new lead that plays on top of that. So we have this viola section here, which is a different lead. Sounds quite bright there, but in the context of the mix, I really kind of wanted that to stand out. So what we did also was adjusted the mic position so that this uh, viola was really in front on a close mic uh, and then quite bright as well. Um, we kept the same theme for a lot of these parts here. However, I just changed the notes around to play a little bit more straight too without these sort of extra added notes. So the string section sounds like this. Um, so that's largely, uh, the brass is largely the same as well. Um, from the beginning, we changed a few notes around here too, uh, as well as the woodwind ensemble. I think that's pretty much copied from the beginning. And then on top of that, we've added in some choirs to really kind of elevate this section as well, and make it sound really big. Uh, so it's two choirs laid on top of each other. The first section is from Mysteria from Native Instruments. So these are kind of cool because they're, they're a little bit more realistic as far as choirs are concerned compared to the Omnisphere choir that we had here. Uh, and with Mysteria, you have this um, XY pad that you can kind of control to, in this patch at least, make it really kind of dissonant or discordant at one point. So you can kind of hear the automation kick in to the end of the section and then the Omnisphere choirs will drop in too. And that's it. That pretty much covers the entire track. It's not a super long track, but there's a lot of detail that we go into here, uh, especially with the orchestral parts and a lot of the editing, the little fills and things that we've done, and a lot of automation and bouncing down to audio. Uh, in the full video as well, we do a mastering project, so you can check out the uh, stem mix that we do as well. So a lot of the stuff is stemmed out and then run through the mastering chain to be finalized. Cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed this piece of music and that you'd find this interesting. If you do want to check out the full series, it's a 15 part, probably about 10 hours worth of, of uh, tutorials. And uh, yeah, everything from con the concept of this track right down to the mastering phase, pretty much cover everything. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Go check it out and I shall see you soon here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video then smash a like and if you want to be notified about new videos hit the subscribe and notification buttons. PEACE!